Hey everyone, I got a little update video here. I had a question about something that I should have been smart enough to actually put in my demonstration video for this product. Uh, people will want to see how well the tiles stay together. So I just got a few here. Um, I will say this. Now, the tiles are not going to stay together if they're hit hard, if they're abused. I mean, the table rocks are probably going to stick together, especially when you have them in a large mass. They're, they're hopefully going to help reinforce each other. But what I got here, let me make sure I'm on camera here. All right, so we just got a couple of the open terrain tiles. So let's put some of these together. Okay, that should be enough. I mean, see, they do stay together, smooth motion. And of course, yeah, I'm mean, gonna be on the edge one there. You, you apply the, uh, the pressure on the edge here. Yeah, it's gonna pull apart depending on the weight that's gonna be pulling. But, see, with some knocking, they may come apart, but they kind of slide back together as long as it's not too hard. Um, And again, I mean, this is not going to survive an earthquake. This is not going to survive somebody slamming into the table. This will survive, I believe, well, from, I don't believe this from my own general use and practice here, the amount of wear and tear that your normal terrain is going to take. I mean, you're not going to have your normal buildings and everything get smashed and survive, but... I do believe this is working nicely. Um, I don't know if I actually showed these in play, but so again, the magnets are not there to hold the scene together through everything that could possibly happen to a table. They're there to hold them together so at least will function nice as you're playing. Um, So, uh, let's throw some more little forest tiles on here. So, I do have another question regarding the forest tiles. So, again, this is something uh, stupid me should have brought up. Again, you're seeing as I'm moving this, there is some separation. Again. This is built, designed to be static at, on this kind of tabletop. Actually, you know, before I get on to the whole tree demonstration, let me show you actually one of the ways that I've been using this. I should move them up to this side. Uh, I hope this works. This is a big... Uh, so, this is a dry erase board. that A magnetic dry erase board. Oops. And... If you really want your stuff to stay, I mean, I made boards. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show it with this setup, but I made some boards using these, and then picked up the entire board, whiteboard and all, and they stay in place. And uh, I don't know the size of this way. It's a it's a nice size whiteboard. I'm gonna say it's probably uh, I think it's 18 by 36 or 24 by 36. So it's not outrageously huge, and it's about the size I would say of your classic double hex map, uh, two paper maps put together. So. And like I said, being like this, if you like how you set it up, you can go store the map away. Maybe you just have to push things back together. Because unlike when it's on the smooth surface I showed before where it will just come back together, when it's on the, magne uh, the magnetic board, uh, yeah, they're going to be held more in place here. So... Okay, but the question on the trees. So let me get two. So we got the large trees, heavy for the heavy forest, 
And we got the smaller trees. And where's my battle master? I just had my battle master. Oh, there he is. Here's my battle master. You can see my wonderful paint job. Okay. So somebody asked me about the theory behind the trees. Now, I'd say the trees were some of the harder stuff that work to come or come on to it, come to a design I was happy with because I wanted to show the mech in the trees uh, without having to move remove pieces uh, from the map to do so. I tried building an area around that would show that you could put the, me the mech inside and didn't like it and also became very weak um, during the, uh, the prototype process. So uh, came to the fact that you can rest a mech right on top of the, these trees. They are, they look bumpy, but ultimately the peaks of all the trees are at the same level. So it actually kind of is a flat surface where you can put a hex based item, hex based mech, and same of these. And I will admit, this is one of the things where you want to, don't want to knock the table, but at least you can show, represent where the mech is on the map. So, uh, I hope that helps with some, oh wait, do got one more question, and I kind of feel like an idiot with this one again, because, uh, well, not so much in presentation, but execution at this point, because here, I just showed you a dry erase board, and I'm now using a piece of paper to show kind of a demonstration here, the best I can. I'll admit, I am no uh, magnetologist. But somebody else, or who was it? I mean, uh, where is it? All right. Uh, Christakis, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, regarding the magnets and their placement, putting them on the corner means you have three magnets to connect, trying to connect. Because there are two poles, you're trying to get maybe two of them to connect nicely. The third might be a little weaker. Would it be better to put it, putting them on the edges so there's always two magnets that I, I originally designed these to have um here let me grab one i did originally design these so the magnets were here instead of on the corners and i actually found that the connection was a little weaker and i wasn't too happy with that just because since it's on the flat surface here i had to, had to move them back just for support there sometimes this wall was a little weak on printing being on the corner here getting a little more beefier um, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. So you think two magnets, north, south, north, south. So this would be easier if we had, oh, uh, well, let me get up the pen to show this a little better. Um, you're thinking with three, they're going to be the third one when it comes in might be kind of not working well. Cause you're, you're I, I think you're thinking you're only looking at it, the, the single pole is going to be pointing at each of your magnets. The way I'm, I'm picturing this is happening is when there's three, you're going to have one, two, three. Wait. I screwed that one up already. Sorry, it's early morning for me. So one, two, three. So you're going to have north, south, north, south, north, south. So you're actually, hopefully, with the three balls, the magnetic field is going to go around like that. That's one of the things I'm saying. Um, I'm not using flat disc magnets. I am using the ball magnets. So the ball magnets, is you, hold on. Hopefully you can hear that. The ball magnets are rattling around in there. So they're able to spin inside there and align themselves best with, with the magnets next to them. So, because of that, when you have, uh, where did I put the, where did I, oh, we, duh, uh, they're still stuck to the dry erase board. So, yeah, so like when you got two magnets here, yeah, they're going to be north-south, so they're aligned, and they're sticking together this way. So, you should put the third one in there, they're going to rotate, so the magnetic field is going around in a circle. Again, I did do a lot of trial and errors with this product, and I did find that um, 
I did find that the having them on the corner actually made for a better hold in general than having it just one on each side. So in my opinion, the corner seemed to work better during my trial trials and testing. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me see here. What else we got here? What are your thoughts? On tree okay, I already got uh, Michael's question about the treetops. Thank you for being a super backer, man. That's awesome. Um, Chris Tarkas, I answered your question there. Uh, actually, let's see. Letha, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Is there actually found a magnet? Some difference? Okay, I, I, I addressed yours. And her last question here. Again, how long does it take to create a, um, a classic battle kit? I will say it really depends on your printer, how many you want to print at a time, the level of detail you wish to print at, but yeah, to be completely honest, it's not a quick process. You are going to be, it's going to be something like, uh, you're going to be dedicated to printing off tiles for, for a while, but the nice thing is once the tiles are done, you can then customize your map however you want. Uh, you're not limited to just playing on the same couple maps that you have that came with the starter set. Um, if you're the kind of player who likes playing on a hex map, this is probably going to be the most versatile thing you have, unless you're... Uh, uh, there are other products. I'm not going to say this is my the genius that came up with this whole concept myself. I know there's other products out there. This is the one I designed. This is the one I was happy with. Um, no, but like I said, it's, it's not going to be a quick process to... Um, print off enough tiles to make a full battlefield and that's one of the reasons why I initially shelved this project when I was only doing exclusively selling of prints because the amount of time it would take me to print off somebody's order to do this was prohibitive along with the the cost of me printing these out tying up my printers tying up time and energy to do this uh, kind of, that's why I shelved the project and the idea now of uh, distributing these through a Kickstarter or selling the files kind of reopened this project. So yeah, it, it's there. The downside is there. It's, it's going to take a bit of time. I don't have the exact estimate on time, um, but like I said, once you have them done, you will have the one of the most versatile play fields on a hex-based map that you can. You can adjust this any way you want. You can put things anywhere you want. You can make it however you want for whatever mission or game style you're playing it. So I know one of the things that really bugged me and my friends back in the day was uh, we were limited to whatever map packs we had at the time. And after a while, playing on the same map, people knew how to use the map to their advantage. So I hope that answers your questions. Um, well, maybe I'll keep doing update videos like this so I can do it for anything that needs demonstration. So, thanks guys. Uh, again, I, to everyone out there that's helped support this, you guys are, are just freaking amazing. I love that this project got funded so quickly and we're off to a really great start. So let's hope everything keeps going well. Have a good day, guys, everyone. Out.